Good afternoon. I hope you're having a more exciting Saturday than I am. I'm going to the tip, which is what we do in Britain. Um, the weekend comes around, the skies are grey, the weather is rubbish, no one can ever think of anything to do, so we go to the tip. And then we go to a retail park and buy more stuff that, in a few weeks' time, will go to the tip. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. As I said, we're taking a, uh, I'm taking a YouTube break. We're going on holiday. And apparently, a large part of going on holiday is making sure the house is tidy for when you get back. It's, it's not part of going on holiday that I particularly enjoy, but uh, my wife has told me to go to the tip, which is fine because she's tidying the house and I get to go out in my BMW and talk to you guys. Um, earlier on today, I did do something exciting. I went and saw my Renault 10, my 1969, Renault 10 that you haven't seen on the channel for a little while. It's been away with Paul at Mulvan Barn Finds and he has fixed the roof. You may recall Cast Your Minds back to my first Renault 10 video. That car was damaged in transit when it was on its way over from, from uh, South Africa and Paul's done it. The roof is fixed, he's used the jack, jacked the roof back up, flattened it all down and it's been painted white and it's beautiful. It's looking really really good. I'm not going to show you that yet. We'll do a big reveal because I've got some interior work that I want to do but we're getting there. So, what car shows are you looking forward to this summer? Come on, this is a car channel. It's not just about conspiracy theories. Well, they're not conspiracy theories, they're all happening. Um, but what, what shows are you looking forward to? Let me know in the comments, because as soon as my Renault is ready, I wanna do what you're supposed to do with classic cars, which is go out and have coffee and take it to shows and enjoy it. I can't wait to get that Renault up and running. Long introduction, but it's been a bit of a crazy week this week because Vladimir Putin has been interviewed by Tucker Carlson. Then you've got the Harry, no, first you had the Rowan Atkinson thing, then the Harry Metcalf thing, and it just seems like everything is happening all at once. And I joked in my video with Richard yesterday that I'd like to be able to go on holiday and then come home and find that everything is where I've left it, uh, in terms of where the world is at. But I don't know. I mean, when I get back, it could be World War Three. Uh, the electric vehicle mandate might have been removed. Every electric vehicle might have devalued itself by another 50%. Who knows what's gonna happen in the next two weeks. So, a couple of things I want to address today. And firstly, let's do this one because it's in my head. I wanna talk about those things as well. Vladimir Putin, Harry Metcalf, and um, Rowan Atkinson. And perhaps Rowan Atkinson and Harry Metcalf never thought that they would be mentioned in a YouTube video alongside Vladimir Putin, but that's 2024 for you. Right, number plates. I'm active in a lot of the anti-low emission zone, anti-clean air zone, pro-car Facebook groups. And I posted a question in one of the groups with 46,000 members just the other day saying, why don't you check in that I am in gear because I was coasting down that hill, which you can't do with an electric car. I was using no fuel as I came down that hill because uh, normally I'm in neutral. Why haven't you, if you live in a low emission zone or a clean air zone, just removed your number plates? It's really quite simple. I've seen a lot of posts about people saying, oh, well, I set up the auto pay against my number plate, but then I dangle a jumper, sweater, if you're watching from the States, out the back that obscures the number plate and I've never been fined yet. It's such a simple thing. I'm reading so many sob stories about people who are getting massive fines from the low emission zones take your number plates off, obscure your number plates, it all goes away. It is that simple. All of this stuff that is being done to us, it can't be done if we don't consent to allow them to do it. Look at how we got the low emission zones and these clean air zones. Dodgy consultations with dodgy data, with dodgy money being spent on dodgy schemes and the money's come from dodgy places. If you live in London, right, and if you know the anti-ULES groups that I'm talking about, let me be very clear. You will not get rid of Sadiq Khan. You cannot vote Sadiq Khan out as mayor of London. It's not happening. He will get in for another term. How do I know that? Because he's the chairman of C40 Cities. If you don't know what C40 Cities is, go on YouTube in the search bar, type in Jeff Buys Cars C40 Cities, and then you'll understand what it's all about. C40 Cities is an organization that Sadiq Khan is head of. They get a lot of their funding direct from the government. The government is paying Sadiq Khan to do the things that he's doing in London and he will not be leaving anytime soon. So don't be under any illusions that the low emission zones are gonna be removed uh, legally, right? The only way you're gonna get around them is basically with people en masse saying, no thanks, 
and removing your front number plates. Anyway, I posted that up in one of the groups and I was shocked by the responses that I got because most of the responses were along the lines of, that's illegal, you can't do that. The thing that they've done to you has been done unlegally, unethically, without you being asked. So what does it matter? But the amount of people that commented saying, oh, pull the other one, Jeff, that's a terrible idea. Well, right, you're all going to vote for your own demise. These schemes will be everywhere because you're letting them happen. If you're not willing to stand up for it, then you deserve everything that's coming to you. Honestly, I don't see the problem. Just whip your number plates off and deal with it as it happens because I don't have a front number plate on my car and I've never had a problem. Uh, and actually my last one, I accidentally drove my Volvo 850 into my caravan. Remember when I owned the caravan and it snapped my number plate in half and I thought I need to get a new number plate ordered. And a year went by, a year. I never had a single problem. I even got quite a lot of free parking as a result of it because at the end, when it comes time to pay, you just go, oh, my front number plate's fallen off. N never been an issue. I was just shocked that so many people are just quite happy to be like, oh, can't do that. You can't do, you can't do that. They can't do the things that they're doing to us. There's no traffic today, so don't moan that I'm a, we get people in the comments being like, Jeff, I wish you'd look at the road more. I can see the road, it's up ahead of me. There's lots of potholes on it. Anyway, so that was my rant about number plates and the low emission zone. Um, I did hint the other day that I am working on something, some form of motorist's lobby. The wheels are very much in motion, <laughs> excuse the terrible pun, but that's coming. And when it comes time for you to become a part of it, I'll let you know. Because no one else is standing up for motorists. The AA hasn't done anything, the RSC hasn't done anything. Um, none of these big organisations are doing anything to stand up for the interests of motorists. There is now, I've seen today, a petition that someone has tagged me in to um, look at road tax. I don't know how much these petitions do, but what harm can it be in getting a petition to have a look at reducing road tax for older vehicles to 100,000 signatures? Ah, oh, Jeff, these petitions don't do anything. Yeah, but then at least we know that 100,000 people signed a petition to remove the rates of road tax and it was ignored. So once again, I've just proven what I said about the ULES, that all these things are being done to us without our consent. If we can get 100,000 signatures on the petition, the link is in the comments and in the description, go and sign the petition. If we can get 100,000 signatures and then the government ignores us, well, that's 100,000 angry people. And that's what we need right now. We need angry people. So do that as well. Vladimir Putin. Motorbike. That'll be banned soon. Vladimir Putin, right? He did an interview, didn't he? And it was brilliant. If you haven't watched it, make sure you watch it. And it basically turns out that Boris Johnson didn't want peace. Boris Johnson wanted a war because he works for people that make money out of war. Uh, and then Boris Johnson has done a statement and an article in the Daily Mail today basically saying the interview was a load of rubbish and Vladimir Putin is lying. One of them is lying and I know which one I trust more. I'll give you a clue. He lives in Russia. Um, what did you think of the Boris Johnson, Vladimir Putin interview? I thought it was great, uh, very candid, and um, well done, Tucker Carlson, for going out there and doing that. Where is the tip? Uh, I think it's this way. Anyway, so there's that. Then you've got Harry Metcalf's video, which was brilliant, and I summarised that a little bit with Richard yesterday. Um, Harry Metcalf's video is obviously going viral. Last time I checked, 400,000 views on it, and it deserves to go viral, because it's a great video. And then you've got the Rowan Atkinson thing, which as I said, we, we've dealt with that anyway. So uh, the video with Richard, if you haven't watched it already, watch that video of our conversation last night because it was a good one. What's coming up before I go away on my break? Well, we have got an interview with Rachel Matthews, Rachel of Colchester, who's been doing her bit to fight councils. Uh, I think it initially came out that Colchester was planning on removing the amount of cars that were allowed in the city and the locals turned up with pitchforks and the council said you can't bring your pitchforks into this council meeting. So Rachel and her team worked out exactly how they can take pitchforks quietly into a council meeting. So I had a good chat with Rachel about how you approach your councils and the good work that they're doing down in Colchester. So that's a conversation video coming up and tonight at 8.30 p.m. after my bedtime, I'm gonna be doing a Zoom conversation with M Guy. M, I don't know if it's M Guy or MG Guy, the uh, British Australian YouTuber who does a lot on electric cars as well. And we're gonna have a chat and probably a little bit, little bit of a laugh about what's going on in the world. 
Um, I did film this video earlier on actually, and then I ended up at the scrapyard I always go to, and then the chap who runs the scrapyard told me off for filming in his yard because there was a Rover 800, you know the big five door coupe, it's quite good looking cars. Uh, there was one of them, and he was like, oh, you can't film here, it's private land. I was like, this is when I need, you know, my man DJ Audits to come and do a video with me. Um, we can go get in people's faces like the auditing channels do. But I basically said, oh, okay, sorry, fair enough, I'll see you later. Uh, but there's a, there's a Rover being scrapped in Mulvern at the scrapyard. If um, anyone is interested, it's probably too late, to be honest, because it's already at the scrapyard, so sorry for the bad news. Um, what else? I think that's it for the minute. Still a bit of content going up before Monday, so uh, keep me posted on what you're up to. Also, I've totally failed at buying a car for my auntie. Do you remember I put the Volkswagen Beetle on the channel? This week I tried to buy a Mini and that had sold already. And then I tried to buy a Renault and that one was all good and ready to go. And then I got a message from the lady saying, oh, my son's crashed his new car. We're going to be keeping the Renault. So now I'm drawing a blank. So I need a car for up to about £2,000 for my auntie. Uh, we're going to loan her my wife's car whilst we're away on holiday because we will be taking the X5 with us. Um, but yeah, still shopping. And if you know anything about Mini Coopers, particularly the diesels, I'd quite like to put her in a Mini Cooper diesel. But if you're all there in the comments being like, Jeff, that's a terrible idea, uh, then I won't. But my auntie quite likes the look of a, an early Mini Cooper. Not early, early, 60s early. I mean, early R53. Um, God, I really can talk, can't I? When, I, when I get going. I really only meant for this to be a short video. Let me know what's going on in your world. Let me know what I've missed and what videos I haven't made. I appreciate I've been pretty busy on making videos this week, but there's still so many subjects that I haven't touched and trying to get onto everything. But the, as I said, it does feel like um, the, the stuff is just coming thick and fast from every direction. I've got so many things in my inbox that I want to deal with. You've got this um, Society of Motor Manufacturers report that's just come out and they're saying EV sales are up X percent and then someone's emailed me saying oh, Jeff I've done the numbers and the percentage that they've announced is wrong. They've said it's 90%. The actual, the actual percentage is more like 60. So lies, lies and damn statistics everywhere you look but not on my YouTube channel as of about Monday. <laughs> What are you gonna do without your fix of Jeff buys cars? Are you gonna survive without my ranting or is it gonna be a welcome break? Thanks very much everybody for the ongoing support. You sir have a flat tire on your rear right. If you're driving an Audi A4 in black, uh, just check your rear right tire because that guy's is totally flat. Cheers for watching.